Hello everyone, I'm urologist Omar Erdemakaya. Our topic today is sexually transmitted diseases. What should we pay attention to? What should we be afraid of in sexually transmitted diseases? I will have a short video presentation about this. It is possible to divide sexually transmitted diseases into two in general. As viral ones, that is, those that are transmitted by viruses and those that are bacterial, that is, those that are transmitted by bacteria. Why do we separate them as viral or bacterial? Because bacterial ones can be cured, viral ones cannot be cured. It is not possible to fully cure it. When a patient is infected with hepatitis B or C or HIV or herpes simplex virus HSV or HPV, we cannot remove it from the patient's body. When a microbe enters the patient via viral route, it cannot be removed. In HSV or HPV, and in hepatitis, the patient's own body resistance can eliminate it, but unfortunately, this is not the case with HIV. There are partial treatments. What we do most often in HPV is partially burning the warts. We mostly give medical treatment for HSV, there is one drug that we call Valtrex. In hepatitis B, C, and HIV, infectious diseases department follow up and treat after diagnosis. Other than that, which diseases can be transmitted bacterially? There is a group of bacteria that we call Mycoplasma urea plasma chlamydia. Gonorrhea is produced by these microbes the most. Apart from that, there is a germ called gonorrhea that causes urinary discharge and penile discharge. There are also syphilis, giardia and vaginalis as bacterial. These are the most common bacterial infections. In bacterial infections, it is possible to completely cure the patient with antibiotic treatment, to completely remove the microbe from the body, and it is also necessary to do partner therapy. But when the patient receives the same microbe after the treatment, the same complaints are observed again in the patient. The body doesn't develop resistance against it. So what's the best way to avoid sexually transmitted diseases? Avoiding suspicious sexual intercourse and using condoms. What are we talking about when we say suspicious sexual intercourse? If you do not know the last 2-3 months sexual intercourse history of the person you had a relationship with, this means suspicious sexual intercourse. The most important thing here is to use condoms, but even if you use a condom, there is still a possibility of transmission of HPV and HSV viruses, but it will be protective for HIV and hepatitis B. Again, it will be protective against gonorrhea and bacteria. HPV, HSV viruses are still likely to be transmitted. Apart from that, there is, unfortunately, no cure for viral infections. However, we can give drugs to suppress the disease and remove the warts caused by the disease. Well, can both HPV and HSV or HIV occur at the same time? Yes, it can. We can also see HSV lesions within a week or two in a patient coming to us with HPV. It can be transmitted at the same time. Hepatitis B and C treatments are made by the infectious diseases department. They have long and chronic treatments. Same with HIV. But the patient does not have to panic if he has infected with bacterial ones. So how do we diagnose? We make the diagnosis with laboratory tests. It is difficult to diagnose viral ones at an early stage. There are RNA polymerase tests in the early period, they are not performed in every hospital. In many private hospitals, it is done at high fees. We have the chance to diagnose hepatitis B, C, HSV or HIV on the 15th day and first month. But if the test is positive, then you have it, but when it is negative, it doesn't 100% mean you don't have it. So, after 3 or 6 months, it is necessary to test the patient again. Therefore, when the patient comes to us, there is no point in giving these tests to the patient immediately after the suspicious sexual intercourse. Of course, it is necessary to explain this to the patient well because some patients come in a state of panic. Am I infected with HIV, hepatitis B? The patient makes himself sick. Also, when the patient reads the symptoms of these on the internet, he sees one or two of them in himself and worries thinking he has HIV. In my opinion, instead of bothering yourself, let's get your test done, let the question marks in your mind disappear, and at least you will be relieved. 
Apart from that, it is possible to successfully treat bacterial infections with antibiotic therapy. As we said, sexually transmitted diseases should not spoil your pleasure or disrupt your sexual life, because sexually transmitted diseases can cause infertility in the future, chronic prostatitis in patients. It can disrupt both the sexual life and reproduction of the patient because it creates infertility. Thank you for listening, best regards.